Let's say that you're someone who likes to use a text-based browser, or maybe when you're just reading articles, you like to have a bit less of a distracting reading experience, or maybe you're someone who has vision impairment and needs to use a screen reader. Well, on most websites, they are not designed to work like this. So some websites are going to be better than others. So for example, Wikipedia tends to be really, really good. There is no reason why you can't use Wikipedia on a text-based browser. This is actually probably one of the better websites until you go to a website that is just written in plain HTML. There is no reason why you can't use this website in something like W3M. But then other websites like The Guardian, BBC, The Register, this is basically unusable. So before you even get to the article, I will be scrolling for about maybe 30 or 40 seconds. And if you have a screen reader, this is going to be really annoying to deal with. So what if there was a better way to do this? Rather than having all this garbage here, what if there was a way to strip all of this out and then just get directly to the article? And as you can see, we finally got to it. So as I was saying, what if there was a way to strip all of this garbage out? And it turns out there is, because Mozilla actually has this library called the Readability Library, which basically is designed to, I guess, take the actual contents of the page and just get rid of the rest of the garbage. You don't need the rest of the garbage, you just want the actual contents of the page. And there's a tool that exists called Readability CLI, which makes it so it's really, really easy to actually do this to any web page. And if you've never seen this library in action before, I bet you're going to be really impressed by the results you see. So I said the program was called Readability CLI. That was slightly wrong. The project is called Readability CLI. The actual executable itself is just called Readable. So basically, if we go and pass in the URL to Readable from that register article we just saw before, what it's going to do is go download the web page, go and process the web page, and then just dump everything onto my terminal. Okay, so that's not really that useful. You probably want to pipe it into some sort of application. So you could pipe it into a pager, you could save it in a file, you could pipe it into something like Vim. Now obviously going into Vim isn't super useful because Vim can't interpret the HTML tags, but if you wanted to do this, there's nothing stopping you from actually doing it. So instead of doing that, let's pipe it into W3M. Now obviously you can use any other sort of text-based browser that you want to use. You can use a screen reader, doesn't really matter what you use. I'm gonna go with W3M though, just because I have that installed. So with W3M, there is one option we're going to need to look at, and that is the dash capital T option. So what this is gonna do is basically say, okay, that input data you just received, it is this file type. And if you don't do that, basically W3M is just gonna treat whatever it received as plain text basically. So as you can see, it pretty much just turns into a pager at this point. So what we want to do is pass in a dash capital T text slash HTML. So that's the MIME type for HTML. And that's going to say, okay, that data you just received is an HTML document. Okay, so let's just run this and compare it to what we had before. As you can see, it's already so much better. Up here, we have the title and then straight away, we have the content. So comparing that to what we had before, so that would be... This one, where is it? This one right here. This one is how it looked originally. This is how it looks now. It is a massive difference. You can actually just dump this into a screen reader and it will work perfectly fine. This one is garbage. There's so much garbage we don't care about here. It took us 20 seconds to scroll down to the article. You never actually want to use it like this in a text-based browser. And it's not just the register that is like this. As I said before, some websites are going to be better than others. So let's just try it out with another one then. So this one right here is an article from The Verge. Now The Verge's website is actually pretty good. It's not as good as Wikipedia, but it actually is a pretty good website for a text-based browser. So the improvement on this isn't going to be massive. So this one right here, the improvement isn't massive, but there is a little bit of improvement. There's some stuff that we don't really need to care about, like the author of it and things like that, who did the photography, what it was filed under, things like that. It's not a massive difference, but there is a little bit of a difference there. Well, how about we try another one? So let's try a Australian news website. So. This is news.com.au. This one has a, a little bit of garbage up the top. It has like a login button, a sign up button, a bunch of other things like that. And then down the bottom, I know it's going to be pretty bad because I looked at the, uh, the graphical version of the website. So let's see if we can get down to that. As you can see, 
all of this stuff and like more travel updates, all of this other stuff we don't care about. Let's go over to the improved version and see how that's going to look. So read a bull, past link in, pipe that into W3M dash capital T text slash HTML. So once again, it's not a massive improvement, but some websites are really, really bad. As you saw with the register, that was just one example I found. I guarantee there are other examples like that where their websites just completely fall apart in a text-based browsing mode. Now you can also go and convert local files as well, and that works as you would expect it to, just run readable and pass in the path to the actual file. But I don't really see much of a point of actually doing this because if you're trying to convert local articles, it's probably, you know, something you downloaded because you have a bad internet connection or something like that. And in those instances, you're probably just better off using an RSS feed instead. But if for whatever reason you need to download the full web page, then you can go and convert those files locally. If there's some other reason that I'm missing out on for why you might want to do that, then let me know down below. But I don't really see any reason to do so. Now, another thing that actually could be useful is the dash lowercase p option. So let's just test that out a bit. Now, I was testing a bit off camera. So what this right here is going to do, so dash lowercase p HTML dash content, that is basically going to download the web page, process it, and then just keep the HTML content and get rid of the title. So we run this now, and as you're going to see, no title this time, but we have the exact same content. We can go do the opposite of that and just keep the HTML title by using the HTML dash title option. Now that one's not really as useful, but you can use it if you do want to use it. Now you can also use another option called excerpt and excerpt is usually just like a little bit at the top of an article saying, you know, like what the article is probably going to be about. So if we do excerpt and HTML title, as you can see, this is the title right here and this is the excerpt. So Virgin Galactic has unveiled plans for a new super jet, blah, blah, blah. I don't actually care about that. So that is the excerpt up there. Okay. Now you don't actually have to keep the article being in HTML. You can get rid of all the HTML and just convert it back into plain text. And if we want to have the title and the actual content like that, what we can do is title, comma, text, dash content. So not HTML content, this time text dash content. And we run this now. And as you're going to see, this is all in plain text. So all of the HTML tags have been stripped out. All of the tabs have been stripped out. Basically, it's just the text of the actual article. So sometimes this isn't going to be perfect. And there's going to be HTML tags that it doesn't really understand how to actually convert. So if you want to just set what it does when it runs into tags like that. Maybe it's malformed HTML or some weird tag that just hasn't been covered by this library just yet. What you can do is pass in the dash dash low confidence option. So if we do dash dash low dash confidence, we can set the confidence level we want to use. So if we do dash dash low dash confidence, and then there's three options we can actually pass into this. So we can pass in no op, exit, and also force. Now what no op is going to do is basically say, okay, I don't know what this HTML is. Just leave it in the document and don't touch it at all. Just leave it there. Just deal with it later. What force is going to do is try and force the conversion. Now force may introduce some weird unexpected behavior. If it's maybe some weird malformed HTML tag that doesn't make any sense. So I would recommend avoiding the force option. And the safest option is the exit option. Exit, what that's going to do is if you come across some weird HTML, basically it's just going to say, nope, I can't do this and just quit out. So I would probably leave it on no op or exit force if you really want to, but no op is probably going to be fine most of the time. One other thing you can do is the dash capital U option. And what that's going to do is say, okay, even though this doesn't look like a URL, I'm going to treat it like a URL and try to download something from it. Now, most of the time you shouldn't have to do that. I haven't actually run into anything where you would have to. If you're using just HTTP and HTTPS, it'll be fine 100% of the time. But if you're using some other sort of protocol, maybe it could be a problem. If you're just using regular websites though, you don't ever need to include this option, so it should be fine. So if you would like to get this installed for yourself, there is a GitLab page over here. 
If you're on Arch Linux, you can get it from the AUR. If you're on anything else though, you can download it with NPM. Now, this is a node application and there's a very good reason why it is a node application. So the developer explains that down the bottom. So he knows that node is slow, but JavaScript is the most sensible option to use for this because the Mozilla readability library is written in JavaScript. Now, there have been apparently ports to other languages, but Mozilla's version is the only version that is being actively maintained. Now, obviously you could create some sort of way to interact from JavaScript to some other language. You can do that. There's no reason why you can't do that, but it is much easier to just work with the library directly in the language that it's written in. So personally, I don't use this that often because most of the articles that I wanna read their website has some sort of RSS feed and it's much easier just to use an RSS feed if you have the option to do so because then you don't have to deal with converting anything. It's just automatically in plain text and you can just read it in a page or like less or you can read it in Vim or you can chuck it into a screen reader or you can chuck it into a, a text-based browser. It doesn't really matter what you're reading it with when you're reading plain text. So if that isn't an option for you because you like reading from websites that don't have RSS feeds, then this might be a good option for you if you do like to have that distraction-free reading experience. So I think that is pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinian, Craig, Nathan, Andrew, Montazar, Joseph, Peter D. Road, Tony, Donald, John, Mikkel, Spagin, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go support the channel, there'll be some links down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel or anything else you want and on a small kickback for it. Also, go check out my podcast. That is Tech of a T, available on Library and YouTube and wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, go check out this channel, available on Library, BitTube, BitChute, and a bunch of other platforms as well. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that is pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.